government for most Canadians is an unresponsive giant which seems to pay little heed to the thoughts or wishes of the ordinary citizen. And nowhere more than here on the coast of Newfoundland. Tonight, an experiment in power, a radical new technique which uses film to tune in government to the needs and feelings of its citizens. It's a technique that gives the common man a voice, a feeling that someone cares. Mrs. Spence of Port de Soie explained. Well, uh, this film uh, that we've that they've took here in Port de Soie and from all over Newfoundland have created a lot of unity among the people and have made them interested in their selves to think there was somebody behind them who would do something for them. And this film has done a lot of work since they've been, a lot of good work. They go around to the fishermen, they hear what they got to say, they hear their complaints, and they make films of it, they show it to their neighbors from place to place. You know that there is people that never knew that little Port of Spall existed in the island of Newfoundland and parts of it. Ask you where Port of Spall is, they don't know. Don't know what's going on here. That's changed a bit, though, eh? Oh, it's changed. It's beautiful, Port of Spall is today. It's a beautiful little spot. And it's so everybody is so interested in their selves and in their homes and their families, in education. They're great people. Good evening, I'm Charles Templeton. Experiment in Power will continue in one minute. The concept that, that society provides a a source of frustration to most of us because we are not heard, we're not listened to, our system of, be of being listened to is obsolete, archaic, outworn, outdated. I think that very little is being done by governments in this country to have people participate, to encourage people to participate, to encourage people to participate to the point where they can meaningfully question the decisions that are being made by bureaucrats in Canada. The film technique is startlingly simple. Films like this one on the Labrador coast record the needs of the community. They're processed and taken to the government department's concern. Government sometimes replies on film, more often by acting on the suggestions of the people. It's simply taking advantage of technology. If government can't or won't go to the people, the people can go to government on film. An afternoon screening can give government information that might take officials weeks to collect on their own. But the film does more. It not only provides the people with an access to government they never had before, it helps them to understand each other. By taking the film back to the community and to neighboring communities, the people are able to observe themselves as from a distance. Now, people who felt paralyzed, powerless, alone, discover that others share their difficulties. And the film provokes discussion. The people begin to organize, and through organization, they discover that government will respond to pressure, that they, the people, have the power. Now, the system was devised in Newfoundland by Memorial University and the National Film Board and has since spread to Alaska, California, and Connecticut. This summer, Our World joined the film crew in Labrador, where the process of awakening was just beginning. The voices you hear are those of members of the Memorial University staff. There's most certainly economic poverty. In, in a large number of these communities. But it's not as, it's not as debilitating a factor, I think, as the, as the absolute lack of choice and opportunity that is available to people. These people are poor because they, they're not heard. They don't have any sharing of experience with people who have gone beyond where they have gone. They have not had any means of getting together to discuss their problems, and this is one of the things this film can do. It helps to bring people together to discuss solutions to, to things which, which they think need solutions. And they can't do it any other way. They don't even have radio. They don't have a daily newspaper. And so there is simply no way that leadership can emerge in communities and that individual communities' leaders can get together. This film may be the start of that. For this film project, my film crew, of a sound man and a cameraman, joined me six weeks ago. And since then, we have been traveling together by boat along the whole southern Labrador coast. It's been a wonderful summer. We will have shot 40,000 feet. Some of it, three or four blocks, I would say, were exciting, really exciting, and all of them worthwhile. Getting lots of mackerel lately? Yeah, 
Tony Williamson is the university's contact with the Labrador Coast. He has served for the last two years between 50 and 60 communities from Cartwright to Battle Harbor. There's hardly any fish on the coast at all, on the whole Labrador coast. They've had bad years before, but within the last 30 years, this is the worst summer they've ever had. Traditionally, the families on this part of the coast have been very, very isolated. South of Cartwright, the adult population now, a population over 40 years of age is, is 80 to 85 percent illiterate. They can't read. They had no opportunity for schooling. The poverty of, in these areas is poverty of exploitation. The kind of exploitation that takes advantage of a kindly, trusting, generous, and illiterate population. The exploiter, I would say, on this coast over the years have been the, the merchants from Newfoundland. They have prevented the fishermen from accumulating enough capital to innovate, to get his head above water, to get his fishery beyond the peasant stage. They have no bidding power. And, not, and, and mainly because they don't think they have. They don't realize, really, that, that the people they are selling their fish to want that fish as badly as they want the money for the fish. I don't, many people, I don't think, really realize that they're working for themselves. They're, they're working for the, for the patron. Alongside of the merchant, the minister has been a very influential man on this coast because he has always represented the educated. And uh, the minister has always uh, involved himself in affairs outside of spiritual matter. One of the saddest things I think that you encounter along the coast is the real lack of, of a sense of worthiness or a, a lack of self-confidence that you meet among people. This is very evident for any outsider or stranger who comes in who is treated uh, with, with cap off and yes sir and given the seat of honor in the house and you speak to a person seeking information and he says, well, I can't talk about that, I don't have any learning until he come to thy everlasting kingdom. Amen. The first reaction to me when I traveled along this coast was, are you going to get a wharf for us here at Charlottetown? Are you going to get a road for us from Lodge Bay to Mary's Harbor? And I said, no, but you can do something for yourselves. What I'm trying to do is, is to show the people that if they get together and organize, then they can get someplace. We're making movies around this area, you know that, yeah? Do any fish today? Seven barrels. Don't go away, we're going to do one. Another, another yep. magazine now. Sounds better, huh? No commercials. No commercials. No commercials. No commercials, no, sir. Straight through. Production number 4004, Labrador Coast Project, August 6, 69, at Capes and Charles. Q. Well, Rex, you said before that uh, things had been pretty neglected here, that you didn't see your representative very often. Uh, how long has that uh, been like that? Uh, do you have meetings at all, or what? No, well, there haven't been a meeting here for about four years, huh? Four years, I think, since uh, I remember being here to have a meeting. You know, he just came in and he stepped on the wire for all oh, but five or ten minutes, I guess, and he was gone again. 
I haven't seen him since. That was in just before the last election. They don't care about us, no. If they cared about us, they come visit us at a time. Have a look at us, see what it looks like in here. If they cared about us, they wouldn't only come on election day, or the day before, would they? Who do you vote for? How do you know who you're voting for? Do you do you have a, a nomination before? Oh, yes, yes. <coughs> you know what I mean by a nomination, Rex? You, most places you have a you have a local association for whatever party you're in, and you nominate the men that you want to run. But do you know who who the man is when you're voting for him in the first time? Uh, who chooses him? How does he get on the on the slate? Well, we don't know anything about that down here because that's all done in Newfoundland. This man steps in and he votes for him if he wants and if he thinks he wants him. That's the way. That's the way it runs. We haven't got no say into it. Have you ever wondered about that? I've been wondering, yes. I don't know how it works. To date, they haven't had any means at all of communicating with people who who make the decisions that really affect their lives uh, through organizations and and through this film project. We're attempting to to put them in touch with with things that they should know about. One of the things that we hope this film process will do will be to, first of all, to show the Labrador people uh, themselves just how, uh, just how little they are receiving in the way of, of benefits. What have we ever got here from the government? What have the government ever given us here in Cape Charles? Nothing. Tourish pieces of chain across the tickle under the Mora boats. It's the only thing ever they gave us. And they gave us radios about 10 years ago. Now they've taken them away. So what have we got left? We've got nothing. Do you know how much it would cost to build a road to Mary's Harbor? I don't know, sir. I've got no idea. But I don't think it costs what, not a great lot. Who have you asked for it? Well, uh, we've asked our member, Mr. Hill, to sign petitions. But he did promise us the road here. The last time he was here at election day, he guaranteed us that the road was going to be start, going to be activity on the road that fall. But so far, we haven't seen any activity on it. <laughs> probably the reason that we never asked in the right time, probably. The money was all spent before we asked. It must have been what happened. They haven't got any, any now, have they? That's what it looks like, anyway. Besides building things like wharves and putting in power, money could be spent to so people can make more money. What, what do you think could be done here that way? What would help? Right now, I suppose there's not much can be done. There's no fish to get, is there? There's not much you can fall back on. You know, you've got to forget, can you, for this year, you've got to forget, forget the fish tree altogether. There's not even much else, only berries. Or Five. seal meat, or something like that. <laughs> Maybe. The question is, how can, how can we get that money here? Can the people get that money here? Can they go out and look for it? If we're organized, maybe we can try to interest companies in coming into here and, and building a plant so you could sell your herring or your mackerel or your seal meat in cans. Do you think much money has been put into Labrador? No, sir, I don't think there's much money put into Labrador. Uh, not in this part of Labrador, no, not on the coastline. You've had merchants here for uh, many years. Have they put any, anything into Labrador? I don't, I can't see what they have. I think they have taken more out of Labrador after putting into it, putting sure. it in their own pocket. Mm -hmm. That's what it seems, huh? They don't, they leave, they don't leave it away. for the fishermen. <clears throat> They're a fish away to feed the people in Newfoundland. They give them some mess, all right. You can't, uh... But why can't that fish, same fish, be processed here, on the coast? Give our, our people, the people that's catching the fish work, more work and more money, and a better chance to make a living. Pessimism and anger had turned to constructive thought. The people had begun to question and to suggest solutions. It would be years before their problems were solved, and government would have to help. But the real solutions would lie with the people. Don Snowden. The people are, are so far removed from any form of effective organization that there's got to be a tremendous job of adult education go on in its broadest sense along the Labrador before we could reasonably hope that people are going to be able to have the kind of power that we expect they, that we know they can have and that they do have, but that they don't have individually. That power is a collective kind of power, and it certainly isn't evident on the Labrador coast yet. The first groping step on, toward this will come when this film is screened on the Labrador coast, 
well, people start to see that there is a consensus about certain things which affect the lives of all of them there. Our world will be back in one minute. Well, in provincial government. Well, in some 90 minutes. <laughs> Fogo Island lies some 90 minutes by ferry boat off the northeast coast of Newfoundland. When filming began there two and a half years ago, its fishery was declining and rumors abounded that the federal and provincial governments had decided it was an economic write-off. The only solution was to move the people of Fogo to the mainland. Well, the islanders objected. They wanted to stay, but they were at a loss as to what they could do. So films of the kind you saw earlier were taken and used extensively to provoke discussion on the island. Slowly, ever so slowly, a consensus for action began to emerge. A cooperative was formed, the government responded, and the memorial crew returned to film the ceremony which marked Fogo's first success and to celebrate real people power, the power to make things happen. critical test case because the f there are about 4,500 people on Fogo Island who about two years ago uh, said that they were determined that they were going to, going to continue to stay on the island in spite of, of uh, whatever plans resettlement people had for, for the island. of the fishermen at, at the time the filming was, was done. They had only very intermittent attention from either level of government that affects them, provincial or federal. Since that time, they have a, a fisheries cooperative which is still fraught with all kinds of, of dangers and, and that come about through inexperience, but that cooperative has over 650 fishermen in it. They are producing what I think is unquestionably the highest quality fish in, in Newfoundland. Um, they are putting a substantial amount of money every week into wages in that community, wages that didn't exist there before. Uh, and it's providing a, a focal point for, for the fishermen, which has not existed on Fogo before. They have a shipbuilding yard in Fogo Island, and they're building long liners, which are a kind of intermediate technology type of fishing boat, which Fogo Island people had not had to any extent before. It's the first and only cooperative shipbuilding yard in the province, and that has come about un because of help from government, but unquestionably because government heard people saying that they were willing to help themselves to do something. They couldn't do it alone. They needed government assistance, and they demanded government assistance, and they're getting it. It was about two years ago they started. We were more or less like a bunch of sheep just wandering around without a leader. And now, since we've organized, well, we've made very good progress. I think they began to see that they could do something for themselves and not as probably they, they thought originally that someone, the government or somebody, should come in and do everything. Of course, we're always used to fish merchants and they were beginning to move out. And a lot of people began to think, well, look, 
we're soon going to have no one to look after us, and we can't, we're not strong enough to look after ourselves. So this is when we decided then to, f to farm the, the, our cooperative. And now since we farmed the cooperative of us, we, we feel that we're stronger, we, and you know, we think we can do it now. So uh, through the filming, this helped us too, to farm the co-op. We need about a half a million dollars now, or a backing of a half a million dollars. And we could, it, in my mind, we could put full oil and right on top of the world. So I understand the other day, uh, uh, what's his name? Prime Minister, who's up in Western Canada. And I heard after he come back, he just chucked along $300 million to him just because they were a little bit noisy. But probably we're not noisy enough. If you were a little noisy, you probably might come down and give us a half a million dollars, which would be a good help. A little higher. A little higher. Yeah. All right. We got four long liners here being built now, so it's in two years, and I'd say that's, you know, fair progress without too much money and too much help from the government. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know why this. I couldn't possibly think of anything else to say that hasn't already been said about Fogo Island and everything else. What's been done here on Fogo Island in the cooperative movement, like it's been said before, could not have been done by one or two people. It had to be done by all of us. I would say that the film did this, that it has done the work which the politicians should have been doing for the last 20 or 100 years. We think that effectively used, sensitively used, uh, this film process can be one of the more important things in helping to bring about change. It's helping to pre present a consensus. It's helping to provide a focal point for people to discuss courses of action that are open to them and to examine these. It's giving them a chance to be heard, yes. It's a, a slow process, it takes a long time, but we just can't see how it can be done any other way. I was asked a question, uh, short while after the films, uh, Fogo Island films were shown here, uh, what I thought the effect would be on the people of Fogo Island, and I said, uh, within a year, if there's no follow-up, uh, the whole thing will be completely forgotten. Because there's anyone's guess what could have, what would have happened without the film. I think probably our situation here now would have been quite different, certainly. I don't think we would have had a shipyard here, or even a cooperative farm. It'd be hard, pretty hard to say what would have happened. We might have been all gone. Experiment in power. Charles Templeton, Our World will return in one week.